Okay. All right, all right, all right. Good afternoon, everyone, our, uh, our, our audience and the crowd at large. So normally we do uh, do this video and take them over to YouTube. So obviously we will be meeting our uh, audience right there at the YouTube channel. So we just wrap along with me YouTube channel so you can catch this video um, after this day. So today I'm very, 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 very fortunate and very excited. <laughs> <laughs> to be welcoming uh, Prudence <laughs> from Prudent Shoes, who is our guest, who's going to be telling us more about his her business and then uh, very, very incredible entrepreneurs. So I love entrepreneurs that are more on the product business, not like us, who <laughs> are more on the service business. So I, love <laughs> I think we've got a shortage of people who are into the, the product business. Everyone wants to do service because I think everyone thinks it's an easy business and a quick catch. So, but when I see entrepreneurs that are doing products, wow, my heart just melts. So normally what I do is that I don't introduce our, <laughs> our guests so that I don't take away any of the cracks of the information that they would like to share with us in their intro. So we have been doing this session for quite a while now, uh, Entrepreneur Talk with Rappelang. We also have the Tech Talk with Rappelang and the Leadership Talk with Rappelang. So this segment is going to be Entrepreneur Talk with Rappelang. So we have taken a break for a while. I had been uh, positive, co uh, positive, COVID positive for quite some time. So, but uh, now I'm back. So we had taken a break back. For, uh, for, for quite some time, but I'm very, very excited to be back and uh, to be starting with you is really, really an honor. So thank you so much for um, coming Prudence. And uh, just to begin with, I just like us to explore your journey, where it started, who is Prudence, what inspired you to start, and then just share with us um, something that we also don't know about who Prudence is all about. So yes. just tell us more because I don't want to do the introduction lest I <laughs> mess up some of the very important nuggets that, uh, of the information that you would have wanted to share with us. So just share with us briefly about who Prudence is, what are you all about and how has your journey been like? Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me up here long. It really is a pleasure. And Prudence is just a normal girl next door, you know, we call it smoking and <laughs> she was just uh, a normal person who wanted to just go to school, graduate and get a professional job. But something inside me just decided, uh uh girl, you know, you're bigger than that. So Prudence is just a normal girl. Oh, gets in Koskonong. After high school, I studied electrical infrastructure and I unfortunately did not even uh, continue that path. So I actually went into straight corporate. I was doing financial advice as a one of the consultants uh, for companies. I worked for companies, the financial advisor. So I've done insurance, I've done banks, I've done over seven years, I've worked for four companies. But you know, when you are meant to do something, you will eventually get to do it. So with God's grace and me following my passion for actually having something for myself. I felt I want a brand, but I need to do what I love because that's the mistake that other people do. You just want to do business. You don't even know what you want and you won't show the passion in it. So Prudence decided to take that path of having your own shoe brand, which is the shoes that I love. So it's going so well so far. And yeah, I'm, I'm a mother of two, of course. That's one thing you guys maybe didn't know about me. And <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so far, so good, man. Um, I stay with my partner and with the kids and the business is going amazing so far. The support from South Africans, <gasps> breathtaking. <laughs> no, it seems like you are having fun, but I know that's the way it all started in terms of your career. Yeah. You were in the corporate, as you have just yeah. said, and uh, you have probably learned some quite invaluable lessons that you have brought into the yeah. business. So how was that transition like? And I'm asking yeah. this as the backdrop of so many people who are on the other side who are always very scared 
to come yes. to this side simply because they're looking at the risks of what yes. if I can't be able to maintain the lifestyle before the, the, the financial certainty that I used to have now. Yes. It's like that is going to be compromised. So with you, what was happening in your mind when you were transitioning from corporate into entrepreneurship? Because it can be scary for most of the people. Uh, too much. It was not easy. <laughs> and I actually didn't just wake up and then decided it took me a while I was scared I won't lie I wanted to start from 2016 it took me literally four years for me to start because of the anxiety the not wanting the uncertainty of the business it wasn't easy but initially when I finally decided to switch I did it looking at the time frame of when I've been postponing, I've been saying I'm going to do this. And if I had started in 2016, I'd probably be somewhere today, but it's never too late. I started in 2019. And when I left my job, I actually had no funding. I had no capital. I had nothing. I just felt I've been making excuses for myself to say, no, I don't have capital. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll start next year. I'll whatever. You know, the, the thing I would, like you mentioned, Everybody wants that comfortable basic salary to live every day and now and then and you know afford everyday livings. But 2019, when I did it, it was end of May and I was pregnant with my second daughter. And I was like, I'm gonna make more excuses this now or never. And then I did it. <laughs> I did it and it was fun. The the response from the market was the one that actually gave me the courage because we depend on customers. I can love my business and I can be passionate, but if I don't have customers, there's no business. So that gave me the, the, the assurity that this is going to work and I've been making it work ever since. So the transition was scary. I won't lie, but it's doable. <laughs> if you, if you so, want it, if you love it, <laughs> just go for it. That's one thing that I always tell myself ever since that day, that if you want to just do it, you have nothing to lose. You try it. If it works out good, if not, try another one. <laughs> okay. So tell us now more about the company itself and the brand. What is it all about? I mean, I've went through your website, very, very elegant and good looking heels there and very, very nice. Uh, women's shoes so you know and what also inspired those those designs so tell just tell us more about what your company is all about and and the brand itself and the products that, that mm -hmm. you have. okay well first of all yes we are about elegant heels we are about style fashion good taste and the reason i went with that specific type of shoes that you're seeing on the website is to let So when I went with the type of design and the name behind it, um, it I wanted it for, for everyone to resonate with it, to say it is from South Africa and the quality is compatible with the bigger brands and the designs are just oh, amazing. And I made sure that I keep the standard as what you see on the website to make it clean as well. The packaging is clean. Everything must just be up to a certain standard which is the one that I've set for prudent shoes because when I initially started I was looking for a pair of shoe and then I couldn't find what I wanted so I'm doing what I wanted now with the brand the name the, the branding the logo everything is just clean simple and elegant and sophisticated and the quality as well it matches with the prices of the shoes so so far with the website as we've mentioned we make sure that everything is on point. People, when you buy online, it's easy. I don't know if you've went through the buying process. We made sure that it's user-friendly and it's also secured, but you know, when you put your details and whatnot. So the brand itself is a class, a class. We, we, we cater for the middle class going to the upper market and we make sure that it's as clean as possible and the service as well we make sure that is actually our number one thing that <laughs> customers come first without you guys. I'm a nobody. <laughs> so I need to make sure that customer service is always number one. It's on point. Hence, if, if you cannot transact online, some people are not comfortable. We give you an option to say, no problem. Contact us on WhatsApp, do an EFT, be comfortable in the transactions that you're going to make. It's your money that you're putting in. Either. 
All right, I would also like to invite our viewers to this session so that they can be able to ask you questions as and when they feel like. So there's a chat option there. So you can post your question directly to Prudence just so that we can read it out and then Prudence will be very kind and uh, prudent oh. <laughs> to, to take your question. So uh, yeah, we'll be expecting more questions and a very, very interesting question that uh, we're expecting to come up. So uh, just as you said, you you started this business as you were transitioning from corporate now wanting to be a woman entrepreneur inspired by fashion and wanting to really start a shoe brand simply because you you, you didn't get the type of style and the elegance and the quality that you were looking for and then you're bothered by that and then you started one so how did you start this business did you maybe apply for a funding, got a funding, <laughs> and then everything was just done for you? So how did you start this um, uh, business? What was the process? What were some of the challenges and difficulties in getting it off the ground? Okay. Um, yes, when I started... Or well, maybe it I was easy have... for brilliant people like yourselves. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was easy. It wasn't at all. It just when you have passion for something, you just bypass the difficulties of it and make sure that it works. That's what matters. So when I started, no funding. Let's make that straight. <laughs> and no capital, no savings. Yeah, literally because I felt that that has been my excuse for the past years of not starting. So what I did. I would get orders. I'll ask my customers, place your order, give me your money, and then I'll make sure I source the right shoes for you. And then you get your shoes in like 14 days or 20 days. Sometimes it was longer because I would wait to get enough orders so I can place like 10 shoes, you know, and then get them shipped. And then it was just a bit of a slow process because some people would phone and say, I want a shoe tomorrow or for Saturday. I cannot do that. I need to get the right shoe for you, the proper quality. And it was honestly a slow process, but it was a matter of testing the market and making sure that I get it right as well. I, I, I didn't get it right the first time, but <laughs> I learned a lot. And yeah, people were just positive, but I got a lot of response saying, if the waiting period is quite long, at times we want shoes in a week, because at times it could take a month for me to get a shoe for you. It was that slow, but I've learned so, so much. And I'm grateful for what happened last year. It was the third year, but I had to press pause and restructure my business structure to say, that one wasn't working, let's take a new route. But yeah, that's, that's how it started. No, no funding. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 you spent, <laughs> but you spent about 10 years thinking about this business uh, from since yes. 2008, there's this, back that just hit you but um, yes. but but you really took your time to think okay. through and maybe plan uh, when you are about to start so what what made you take so long before you really uh, took that leap of faith and and started this this business yeah. and uh, 10 years can be uh, quite a long time so what a made you time. wait so long and then maybe wanting to start it at the right time or your yeah. right version of, of time mm -hmm. uh, first of all it was uh, I, was, I was scared that is the first reason that it took me so long I was really scared and the other reason I was not sure do I want to no I am right I'm working I have a salary so the years kept on passing by and I kept postponing but in, in some of those years I took my time investing it in doing my research making sure that I know what's missing in the market will this work will this be where I want it to be because I have my own version of seeing Prudent being a big woman footwear brand all over the world. But that needs a reality planning to say, how are you going to start? You can't just start and boom. So in those years, I was honestly planning and keep busy. Should I? Shouldn't I? And like I said in daily I was like, you know what? I've wasted enough time. I think I'm equipped enough because otherwise, the mistake we also make is to going into an industry when you are not equipped yourself, you need to learn more about the product that you'll be selling, learn more about the market and just learn about being an entrepreneur on its own because it's, it's a different uh, thing that you will be doing besides working. So 
so I've equipped myself. It wasn't a wasted time. I needed that. It, 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 it put me where I am today with the worries that I had and, I, you know, anticipating should I, shouldn't I? And I felt like, okay, it's normal for you to be scared to take this risk. It's very big and I'm proud of myself for taking it. And I'm going to make it work no matter what. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so now as you are starting, um, because I've seen that in your profile, you say that you couldn't find the local manufacturers here. And I think you are using the Italian um, uh, manufacturing uh, backup. So um, what, what informed that? How did you find out about them? And uh, mm -hmm. because I've seen that your shoes are branded yourselves. And how yes. did that happen? Normally people just buy and resell. So, but mm. this is tailor-made for your own yes. designs. And, 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 and you are in charge of the whole manufacturing, even though you source it, but you are in charge of what is being manufactured for you. So take us through that process. How did it start? How did you find out about uh, such an idea of being able to source it that way? And, and, and why are you saying that there are no maybe capacity locally to produce the kind of shoes that, that you're looking for? Um, well, yes, there, there isn't, according to my research, and I've, like I said, the years that I've spent before I started, I made sure that I want everything to be sourced locally. But uh, I believe as time goes, as South Africans, we will look into manufacturing, especially the, the standards. Surely there's companies that make shoes, but they will make your school shoes, your, you know, work boots, your that the standard of having to manufacture the heels that I wanted with the material and the skill and everything that goes into the shoe, it might look like just a shoe, but there's a lot that goes in it. And hopefully in the near future, South Africa will get to that standard of manufacturing locally and getting the right standard and the quality and everything that we require because everybody has their own standards. Otherwise, we have different brands that goes with whatever that works for them. So yeah, I've... I've been also doing more research since I've started as well to, to, to find out more about the local manufacturing. But I believe government will also do something about it very soon. Oh, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> now, uh, how, how are you uh, marketing this? Because, I mean, how, how many years is the business now? Uh, 2019, two years in September. Full two, years. Two, two years. So how have you been marketing it and, and getting it out there or getting the brand out there? And what has worked in the in the marketing? Is it more of uh, social media, word of mouth? Uh, what has mm -hmm. been the strategy of uh, your brand and and just the 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 the, um, the distribution and being able to get the product out there to the to the customer? So what has worked in your marketing effort? Yeah. Well, we still <laughs> so we're trying everything, but what has worked so far? Social media is a very powerful platform for especially products. It's, it, it has worked for me, mostly Instagram. Uh, it did really work. So uh, we might use it for wrong things, but if you use it for the right things, it will work for you. Word of mouth also works. Like I'm saying, we still, you know, it, it's this side that is working, that side it's working, but mostly 80% of the sales comes from social media. And we, we're looking to do more of touch and full experiences so people can get to actually come and touch and fill the shoes and you know try them on and people some of the people want to first foot on the shoe before they buy it and 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 but we're growing into that sector so for now social media I can say it's been doing wonders for the business so so, so in terms of the uh the that reach what type of maybe a uh, profile of customers is it maybe uh, obviously it's women so is it maybe younger yes. women is it uh, the, the older women or is it the uh, slay queens is it the uh, people who want to uh, <laughs> pay <laughs> a higher price affordability <laughs> and all of that so yeah what has been your uh, customer profiling that 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 you are targeting mm -hmm. Mainly people that love quality shoes. I would start it uh, from your middle age, above 20, above 20 going up. Okay. And people that, that love quality, because most of them, when after receiving their shoes, first comment will be, I love the quality. 
I love the fit. I love this. I'm happy. I'm going to come back again. So most of my target will be above 20 and yeah, middle class, if you can afford, but we also made this other point we, because we saw that we're getting a lot of people wanting to buy, but the affordability was a little bit of saying, no, I, I can't afford it. And I made it an option where you can pay 50% and then you can um, settle it the following months to accommodate a lot of people that want to own a prudent shoe, but cannot afford to pay it all at once. So we're gonna be now at least targeting a bigger market than those ones that can buy all at once at the same time. So I saw something very interesting as well that you named them, some African names. I saw Bonang, I saw yes. very Spanish and very, very <laughs> interesting names. So yes. what inspired that and what's the strategy behind that? Well, that um, was because I actually wanted to, to, to be different from the market, first of all, and to give each you a character. Sure. So we know African names have meanings. It's Ubusi, Ubusi C. It, it has a meaning behind. All African names have meanings. So when you look at your shoe, I'll, I'll make an example with Bonang. If you look at Bonang, <laughs> you see it's Bonang. Like it says Bonang. And it's a character when you're wearing it, you speak to your shoe. Your shoe will speak back to you because now it has a name and it has a character. You'd be like, oh yeah, this one, yeah. And it, she looks like Tande. She actually looks like Tande. It is Tande. <laughs> <laughs> having it branded it says prudent tandeka size five so that you keep it like i say it gives the shoe a name even when you pack your shoes there you know who you're talking to or who you're wearing today to an event so mainly was to give them characters and to stand up from the market as well okay now that's interesting so now with the obviously is an is an online store um and 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 uh, how does one because this this is a show that's listened more by entrepreneurs and someone may want to take the product online and yes. uh, what would you say are the advantage of selling the product online and what are also some of the shortcomings and the challenges that you face by selling the products online and okay. uh, and, and how does one put up a, an online infrastructure to be able to distribute via online. So uh, what is the process getting there? What are the challenges? And how would you encourage people to take their products online? Okay. Uh, first of all, the advantage is you get to reach a bigger market. If anyone is buying from KZN, from Durban, they're all your customers. You just take orders and then you deliver. That is the nice part about it to say you accommodate a, a lot of a population to say because everybody just goes online it's easy and you make your deliveries in two three days they send your feedback it's amazing yes it has its own short falls in terms of shoe sizes that's my biggest challenge to say the cuts uh, are not the same depends on the design so if someone buys a size five but now I know my designs, which card is big, which card is small. Before I had a problem to say, if I got size five, I send it through to Cape Town and then it doesn't fit you. Now it must come back and then it must stay back size six. So that was a bit of a challenge, but I managed to get it right by knowing which designs are small cards, which designs are bigger cards based on the design because some are pointy, some are round. So yeah, it's just that challenge of, I have to know which design is made with which card and yeah, it's, it's a good platform. It's like I said, you get to uh, accommodate a lot of population to say they just buy online and then you send through, it's quick and it's amazing. You just need to be on point, like with keeping your stock available. And if you're saying size five is available online, I can't buy mm -hmm. it and you call me and say it's not there. Keep everything up to date. If the shoe is sold out, just make sure it's up to date because you don't want to get customers angry after making payment to tell them stories. But yeah, it's just making sure that everything is on par. You get quality pictures on the social. So when they buy, they know that this is exactly what I'm going to get. Don't post a certain shoe when it comes to something else. Just don't do that. <laughs> so make sure that you use quality pictures. And I order this, I want exactly that. So that's what we've been doing. And so far, it's working. So are you planning to do any online store shortly? Or are you having any short-term plans? to have uh, you know, uh, uh, physical stores physical. and be able to also reach other customers who believe in seeing uh, the product and yes. feeling and touching the product because also mm -hmm. that talks to another market that is not yes. online, that, 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 mm. that are technophobes that wouldn't really believe in ordering something online. Yes. <laughs> How are you uh, bridging that, that gap 
within your customer base? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I am working on it. Like I mentioned, last year was a difficult year. COVID showed us flames. Everyone was, <laughs> maybe, yeah, it showed us flames. But looking into the near future, we definitely, definitely looking to get a physical store to accommodate uh, 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 more customers because I get those uh, wanting to, I just want to touch and feel it. I want to make sure, like you think there's those customers who just don't buy online, not that they don't trust you, they just don't buy online. So we're going to definitely look into it in the very, very near future and make sure that we accommodate uh, other customers that want to touch and feel. Oh, fantastic. So in terms of, uh, because I know that sometimes a lot of entrepreneurs would want to go into business. So have you ever received assistance or support that somehow accelerated your growth? Uh, have you ever been um, maybe in, in, in an incubator or, or received some support from government or are aware of any support that anyone can get when they want to start a business like yourself? Or where were the shortfalls of support for yourself that really had it come? It would have accelerated you to a different level. So what would you say about the support ecosystem that that, that supports small business if that did reach you or haven't it reached you at all? Well, um, it haven't reached me. I've, I've applied for quite a few and I can really look at the type of business you'll be doing. I'm not going to discourage anybody, but I did apply and uh, I haven't been successful, but I got myself a business partner that accelerated the business to where it is today. And uh, yeah, we were looking to acquire more, especially if we're going to go to now getting physical stores, we will still apply for, for bigger funding. And I know government is doing a, a very good job in that department. So we will uh, approach them very soon because some wanted proper steps to say, is this in demand for us to fund this? Will it go, will it whatever? So, so far we've gathered our numbers and we will be approaching government, especially with funding the business for it to, to grow even bigger than what it is now. Wow. So as you're talking about the growth, what, where do you anticipate the business? Uh, maybe even in five years, I know that that will at least be post-COVID. So where do you yeah. see maybe in the, <laughs> in, the, in the near future and how do you anticipate growth? And uh, where are the trigger points that you believe that they can just explode this uh, business to really uh, be out there, be, be national, be... Uh, to the African continent, the world at large. Yes. So what are yes. your plans in terms of uh, having a greater reach beyond the local market? Firstly is, yeah, getting the brand out there. Marketing like crazy. It's what we are working on. And then, yes, in uh, five years, we definitely will be having a physical store. Looking at the effort that we are putting in the brand now, and five years, we will, we will definitely be promising South Africans to be experiencing that uh, in the next five years, by God's grace. But in the meantime, we will be pushing to get the brand out there. People, when they find it, like, where have you been? I've had a few celebrities asking, Can't you, where have you been? I'm like, I just got here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, so what we are working on now, it's still really, really marketing. People need to find out about us. People need to hear. Even if it's just brand awareness, just know about it. And then when they get the shoes, they, they love it. And that's one thing that makes me happy and still be happy with my decision that where have you been questioned? It's Ooh, it melts my heart. I'm like, I'm here now. <laughs> I can relax. The next five years, I promise, yes, we'll be working hard. So I pray that we will definitely have the physical store. So everyone is now leveraging on this wave of support, local Black business, yes. especially women business. Yes. So uh, also, how do we balance it between uh, not pushing too much of emotional uh, Blackmail to the Black consumer? Right. Yeah, <laughs> especially now that everyone must be supported because they are black. So, how are you distinguishing yourself from that narrative? And 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 what is your philosophy around that? Of course, yes, everyone yeah. is for uh, local uh, brands and 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 local yeah. products and, and local yeah. consumption. So, but how do we balance it between not putting it too much into now an emotional blackmail to the <laughs> local? <brand? laughs> 
yeah no not well for myself i am not i'm not really supporting that yeah support black women just, just do what you do and do it right people will buy i personally don't use it much where it's needed yes if it's a be is there a woman involved where it's needed yes i would enforce it otherwise in selling i'm mainly focusing on stretching quality stretching local brand not being a woman and whatnot like i said if it's needed for you to mention it i mention it otherwise for sales brand and quality works for me wow no fun and, and and i see also a developing trend in the the whole fashion industry so because i've seen a lot of people who are also making inroads that are not necessarily um from the fashion background but because mm -hmm. they have a very good business strategy and a business model that that they are able to execute excellently they even yeah. tend to even make better than entrepreneurs that are from the fashion industry talking of the yeah. likes of EO, talking of the likes of um the Gauss Juan of drip so these are entrepreneurs that don't necessarily have a huge background in terms of fashion but they just are entrepreneurs who saw a gap and then found a way to fill the gap, came up with a business model that works. So, and I see the rise of, of that, especially in the fashion industry, that those ones that are from the fashion schools and fashion, what, what, fashion, what, what. So they are more, they don't come with something that people just, you know, uh, uh, tend to accept, like, you know, those ones yes. are able to explode the industry, especially mm -hmm. these local businesses. So where do you put yourself in that? And, 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 and what do you, uh, what do you think um, is a limitation for those that are maybe um, from the industry and the newcomers who are not from the industry, they tend to really uh, do well? What, is, what yeah. does that say in terms of um, uh, entrepreneurship? And, and then I know that those are creatives and then others are more business yeah. men. So what is your take on that? Um, well, you're right. First of all, if, if business is it's your thing, it's your thing. Because you can study fashion and have great fashion, everything background. But if you cannot do business, business is business. It's Aina class the different. It's business. That's what it is. So if you can master anything in business, then do it. Now, I don't have also a fashion background. I just love shoes. So if somebody comes in, I love that fashion background and compared to me, now I love doing business. I love shoes. So they go together mm -hmm. and making it work. So it's, it's a matter of knowing what your abilities are. And on top of that, do not limit yourself. It doesn't mean that if you didn't study business economics or you didn't do fashion designer, you cannot do it. So there's no limitations for me. If you have passion for it and you have the proper business structure, then do it, go for it. Now, I don't have that kitchen fashion background. Business, I've always loved doing business in terms of whatever you see from there. Profit, one rent profit, it's profit. That's why I'm in business. So. For me now, uh, it's, it, it doesn't really matter if you have fashion background or not. If you can make it work, go for it. So, so g given that, uh, as we have spoken about your corporate background, so how yes. did that uh, impact your, your experience in business and, and running business, things like your customer service? I mean, yes. you're also the sales background. You're in a very professionalized yes. institution. So how did that yes. come handy in terms of, the skills that an entrepreneur yes. need to run their business. And maybe that also answer to say that it could be that uh, the creatives, they are more about trying to make the product look good, but they lack yeah. this document and, and, and they, they don't have the business model that can scale their, their product. It's always like they make beautiful stuff and then they sell one-to-one -one instead of being yeah. able to scale those products to get yeah. to, to, the, to the mass market. So how did those skills play a part in you being able to run your business today and be able to, to scale and, and, and be able to be such an entrepreneur uh, that has built a business that, I mean, two years you have already <laughs> shown <laughs> some resilience out of all the difficulties yeah. that were there in two years. So yeah. that, that's really been resilient that you are still here in, in, in two years. So 
what have you learned from corporate that you are adapting into your business? A lot. Um, you know, a lot, especially dealing with customers. I did mention that with no customers, there's no business. So me being in sales industry, customer service, yes, I've been dealing with customers mostly on the phones, but that experience really taught me a lot. And I am using it now because customers is what I deal with every day, angry or happy customers or not satisfied customers. I know very well how to deal with them and make sure that the customer is happy at the end of the conversation. So, you know, it, it, it helped me. I don't know if I did not take that route what would I be doing now? Because you, you know, people, a woman big, it's something else. You need to know how to deal with people, not just certain people. There's different kinds of people and there's different attitudes, different, some people will tell you, this is my life. Like you need to know how to deal with different people. So that helped me a lot. That's why today I have never, ever had a bad ending with the customers. If it's a bad Thing that happened it's a clash it's a shoe size it's a color it's a not happy i resolve it so i've gained that experience of resolving issues with customers yeah so now as a woman as we reflect on the women's month so as a woman how how important it is as, as a woman entrepreneur to be able to get into business with the understanding that um you know, there's still this balance that have to be created. You are not just a woman, you become a wife, you become a, a, a mother, you become a family driven entrepreneur. So how do you put all that context together? And, and, and what are some of the challenges that are there that are unique to women entrepreneurs than, than us as guys, you know? <laughs> because we always say that, you know, um, women should really get into entrepreneurship and starting their own businesses. So, yeah. but what, 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 what is really some of the things that we don't know about that are unique to you as women when you become entrepreneurs, especially in as far as uh, family is concerned? Yeah, no, uh, no balancing. I have a very supportive husband. I mean, of course, he's pushing <laughs> <laughs> the business together. And I think maybe that's why. Uh, uh, that question that's where this question is inspired from it's coming from <laughs> <laughs> yeah no I, I'm, I'm grateful of my partner because wow he is doing the most and balancing I'll just quickly start with balancing it out because now there's business I have to come to the office I have to deal with customers yes I still have to pick up the kids I have to cook I have to there's a lot but you need to find balancing in that and I try because my partner has helped me a lot so if I'm not available in the business I would be taking care of the kids the family staff and whatnot even though my business is everywhere even when I'm home I get orders so I don't necessarily have the work time and the family time mm -hmm. I'm home it's weekend hey the shoe is small I must inquire and I must you know I must make sure that I respond but I make sure that I do not make any relationship to suffer because of the other. And being with my partner, you he is amazing, guys. You know, <laughs> he, he's, always, <laughs> like he's, he's in such a way that we in this together, he believes in me so much more than I believe in myself. He's pushing with me. He believes in this before we even started. I told him about the brand names. Like, yeah, no, that's good, go for it. Okay, this shoe, ah, that is good. Like, I much of Moodle, but otherwise it's amazing. He's, he's very supportive. We balance together the family and the business. We, we make sure that it works. So do you think that there's a room for more women to get into uh, business that their own uh, small businesses? Because I think, they are more reserved than 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 than, than guys, and, and they tend to be you male, know, yes. more safe too mm -hmm. <laughs> in the corporate. Yeah, world. you're right. Do you think that there's right more with... room for, for for women to go out there and start their own business? Because a lot of women are also uh, are also scared of being too independent and uh, uh, start their own vision in a in a family. So they mm. believe that you know I must get a man who must drive the vision of the, of the home. So me coming with this entrepreneurship thing might confuse the, the vision in the mm. home because he's got his own mm. vision and bring my own vision. How do we not look at it as uh, uh, two visions that are separate, but something that can complement the family in as far as building yeah. 
a solid family and an income uh, driven family. So how can that not, 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 not confuse um, everything in the process? Yeah, no, there, there is a room for women, actually a bigger room in the uh, in, uh, business for us to go in, but we are just certain creatures on I don't know why, but <laughs> that thing of, I can say that thing of a man is a provider and, 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 but not in this generation. We know, let's be realistic. Every woman can do whatever. The thing is, we have that thinking, you can imagine things, you can see things, but doing them, it's, some people feel like they're going to intimidate their partners or they sometimes feel that they're not good enough or they cannot make it. But the fact that you can think of something and you can vision it in your head, it means that you can do it. So to all the women, anything, I mean, even if it's a male dominated industry, you can do it. We have so much strength that I don't know where it comes from. So we can do anything as women, believe in yourself, Never ever think that men must always provide. Yes, they're providers. My partner is a provider. I'm not going to belittle him because now I have this brand that is growing or whatever. Know your position in the house. And if you decide to go the business way and it's doing good, never ever belittle your partner. Just make sure as a woman, hey man, we are powerful. We <laughs> have so much skill. Women, go for it. Even if it's a male dominated industry, go for it. <laughs> You can do it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and, and I've also seen something very interesting as I was going through your social media profile that you did sponsor the, the, the Miss South Africa, one of the yeah. Miss South Africa uh, women finalists there. So just tell yeah. us about that. And I will tell you why I'm asking that question. So it happened <laughs> okay. that as I was scrolling through your, your Facebook, then the, 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 the women finalists that you are sponsoring she is mm -hmm. one of the women in our program because we run enterprise and supply development program. So oh, no. very, very fantastic, <laughs> really incredible. So um, yeah, tell us about wow. the importance mm -hmm. of uh, maybe brand partnership as a way of leveraging bigger brands to yes. create your own uh, access and, and, and brand presence. Yes. So how does that uh, work mm -hmm. in terms of that brand partnership to be able to get yourself out there using yeah. the brand. The yeah, brand, you're right. Um, well, one thing we need to know, guys, you cannot do it by yourself. You can, maybe some can, but you need to partner with others, even if it's another small business or another big business, but partnerships will always, always work in the business industry. In this case, um, uh, actually, the Miss South Africa panelist, she's the one that actually approached me. She loved the brand. She was excited about it. She was like, no, man, I really, really love your shoes. And I did not see a reason not to work with her. So I was excited about the partnership of us. And I'm like, girl, let's do this. And she's just <laughs> happy to say, you know, a woman to woman type of business these days, it's amazing. Like I said, the support from South Africans is just on another level. The buying local story, seeing another woman doing great in terms of business, it's amazing. So Tepi Wundla, guys, please vote for her. Tomorrow, they'll be doing the workplace. So they're announcing, um, I'll, I'll be watching. Ooh, she'll be wearing food and shoes. Oh. Ah, again. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All the way on the stage. Yeah, she's this amazing. is South Africa. Yes, I'm excited about it. She's a phenomenal woman. She's doing great things. So I'm happy to be working with her. No, fantastic. I mean, she's a... She's an incredible woman also in the program. So yes. I think she's a, a robotic um, yes. robotics engineer. So by profession, yes. very, very incredible woman. So from robots yes. in trade. <laughs> so I, I, just, I, just, <laughs> I, I just love the business also. So yeah, yeah thank you so much. Um, and I think just the last one from me, any message of support to the women out there? What can you say to them? And uh, you are a woman who has blazed new trade. You are a trailblazer and uh, very, very <laughs> upcoming, very aggressive. And um, yeah, and I think so many women are looking up to you. So what can you say to them as a message of Women's Month to just encourage them as women that it is possible and then they have to really rise and show how it's done and, uh, and, and, and then show that they are capable? Yes. Uh, no, I'm a woman. Women, we are capable of anything. And 
let us not belittle ourselves and our abilities. And first of all, whatever you're going to do, business you're going to start, or even if it's your career, believe in yourself, first of all, and be passionate about what you're going to be doing. Learn from others. We don't necessarily always have to fail to learn the hard way. Just inquire, get mentors, do the right things the first time. You know, we don't always have to trip and fall and then get up. Yes, if you trip, it's fine, but learn from others. Network with other women. Women out there are willing to help other women. So we are capable of anything that we can think of. Most of all, put God in everything that you do as well. He will definitely give you strength. And push, man. Every day, make sure you set a goal that you're going to reach. It's doable. Just do something every day towards your dream and eventually you'll get there. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen over a year or five years or 10 years, but eventually it will happen. So yeah, man, just be courageous. I forgot that one. Mm -hmm. Just take big steps. Let's not play small, guys. Let's take big steps and take over the world. And yes, happy women's man. Wow. <laughs> no, this has really been incredible talking to you. And I think that you've shared a lot of nuggets of wisdom that a lot of women can take mm -hmm. away and be able to go out there and start in their own business and then and, and learn from you how you transition from corporate to starting your own solid business. And I'd say that I'm always excited by entrepreneurs that are pushing the product business. You know, some of us, we are consultants. Mm -hmm. We are happy to be in our office. <laughs> you're doing good. You're doing good. That are, <laughs> that are getting your hands dirty out there because it's never easy to uh, deal no. with a product because, you know, you deal with a lot of customers who are very difficult, who are complaining. Mm -hmm who are, I mean, so many dynamics in, in those types of businesses, but we salute you people who are able to, to drive more of um, the products driven, driven businesses, you know, better than us. <laughs> so thank you so much also for uh, accepting the invitation. And uh, thank you very much for the kind of women that you are and the, the resilience and, the, and the, the passion that you have shown in this interview. And I believe that a lot of people will be able to enjoy it. So we will also um, put this, this, this interview on, on YouTube for those who want to follow it. So the YouTube channel is Rapela Mutsumi. And then uh, you can also go to rapelamutsumi.com. And then uh, you will see more of some of the work that we do on the enterprise and supply development and also how we support a lot of small businesses with a lot of initiatives. So we'll be able to engage from there with a lot of you that are on the line and that will be watching us much more later. So I don't know if you wanted to share maybe uh, the contact where people can find the shoes and, and how people can, can buy the shoes and uh, where they can get them from. Definitely, yes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, first platform to go to, you can buy online or e-commerce. It's on www.prudentshoes.co.za. And you can also find us on Instagram, which is prudent underscore shoes. On Facebook, we are Prudent Shoes. And you can also place your orders on WhatsApp, which is 073 six zero nine two eight six and happy buying guys spring is coming uh -huh. let's get you are there others that you can show yeah. now just uh, just before yes we do. of course that's yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fine that's my guy there's weddings coming now lockdown regulations are a little bit less so let's buy shoes we'll have more events to attend we have this is buitu melo Wow, this is me too, man. <laughs> we also have Sbashe. This is Sbashe. They call him Amlambo. I don't know why, but just this <laughs> And she has a, a gold ankle chain. And our best selling heel, this is Tandega. Very, very nice with the almond green rain, uh, rainstone. Very comfortable. It has an inner padding. I don't know if you can see that. Very, very comfortable and colorful. Spring is coming. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, we also have Bonang. You can also view more online or on our socials. And more designs will be coming soon as well. We'll be getting new range before December. So yeah, be on the lookout. All right. No, thank you so much, Prudence. And thank you so much for coming through. Um, let me just see because I see there's someone who's sending the message. 
nice shoes, yeah. great session. Will will <laughs> she be making Jen's shoes at some point? I get that a lot. I think I should do it sooner. <laughs> I get that a lot. Like, no, we want male shoes. No, uh, we, 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 we have that in the pipeline in the future, of course. <laughs> okay, no, that's a promise. We believe that it will be promise kept. <laughs> so we can't wait also to have our own range so that we can Yay. be able to um, support the Prudent shoe. So yeah. thank you so much, uh, Prudence. And uh, I see there are no any further questions from the audience. So thank you also so much the audience that you have been there let me just acknowledge some few people we have uh matapelo we have pam we have smangali so we have tisa so we have Tulufelo. i mean uh, the list is endless so it's just uh, to acknowledge a few so thank you so much guys for um tuning in and uh, joining us on this uh, interview and we hope those that are ladies will also be able to go out there and support the prudent shoes, very elegant okay. shoes at a very cost-effective price. So we are really excited about what prudent shoes is going to become in the near future. So thank you so much, Prudence, and thanks so much for availing yourself. No worries. Thank you so, so much for having me and everybody that joined us. Thank you so, so much. And we'll see you guys in the streets. You saw our car. We'll definitely be having bulbs very soon. <laughs> we'll see you on the streets. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, thank you so much. Bye-bye, guys. Okay, thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. Bye.